And so I started cross-referencing and I found this theme. And for me, it was too much to ignore, even as a kind of food ignorant kid from New Jersey, where I was just like, wait a minute, if all these books are saying the same thing for digestive issues, what do I have to lose? I was in a lot of pain. I was really uncomfortable all the time. My life was very limited. And so I dove in. Hello, and welcome to the Art of Living Well podcast. I'm Stephanie May Potter, and I'm here with my co-host, Marnie Dotches marmet We created the Art of Living Well podcast to empower you to live your happiest, healthiest, and most authentic life. Each week, we will bring you inspiring and motivating conversations covering health and wellness topics, including fitness, mindset, food, travel, product reviews, and strategies from a variety of experts, including our own bank of knowledge. We are excited to educate, motivate, and inspire you to change the way you perceive health and discover your art of living well. Get ready to feel inspired. Hello and welcome to episode 77 of the Art of Living Well podcast. Before we dive into today's episode, we have a couple of announcements. The first is that we are launching the Art of Living Well Summertime Tribe program, which will kick off on June 7th. How would you like to enjoy summer without letting your health, energy, and mood take a back seat? We've listened and can relate to so many of you over the past few years comment about how your food and exercise routine is completely thrown off track during the summer, leaving you feeling less than fabulous come Labor Day. We really want to help you achieve balance in your life this summer. Having fun, thriving, and keeping true to your goals and intentions so that you wake up in September still feeling amazing in your own skin. We would love for you to join our community, and you can sign up through the link in the show notes and get more information on what the program entails. We also talked about this in a recent episode that we launched, which was episode 75.5, where you can learn more about this program. So don't let your health take a back seat. Join us this summer. And then we also want to give a quick shout out to our listeners around the world. We have a ton of followers in India, which we are so excited about, as well as Mexico, Europe, and Australia. So thank you all for tuning in each week and listening. And then if you are enjoying this podcast, we would love it if you could head on over to Apple Podcasts, take two minutes to leave us a rating and review. This really helps us reach more people so that others can benefit from the inspiring conversations and resources that we share each week. And now for today's guest, we are so excited and honored to welcome Jeremiah McClue to our show today. Jeremiah is a 27-year veteran of the natural products industry and has been on all sides of the business and supply chain, literally from seed to shelf. He was part of the initial startup team at Thrive Market and currently serves as their chief merchandising and product development officer. Prior to joining Thrive Market, Jeremiah served for seven years as the executive global coordinator for the beauty apparel and wellness categories at Whole Foods Market. During his tenure, he pioneered multiple industry-changing quality standard initiatives, including natural beauty standards, organic labeling requirements for personal care, and the largest ever sustainable packaging guidelines for a major retailer. Thrive Market is a leading online marketplace specializing in a highly curated assortment of organic and non-GMO products and focuses on democratizing access to healthy products for the United States. Thrive Market is a leader in sustainability beyond its well-known online marketplace identity, and they are building the world's first climate-positive grocery store. For those of you who may not have heard of Thrive Market, think your natural food store meets Costco. It's an online marketplace for the conscious consumer. They have over 5,000 products across all of the categories you need, including beef, seafood, household and personal care products, in addition to all the pantry staples. And most recently, Thrive Market just launched their veggie and protein-packed frozen meals, which are freezer-friendly meals that are freshly prepared and can be delivered straight to your door. You can create your own meal bundles based on your dietary preference, like plant-based, paleo, etc. We are such big fans of Thrive Market. I personally have been shopping from them multiple times per month over the last five years. And I love that they can pass along savings from not having a store onto the consumer. 
They're also passionate about ensuring that workers are paid fairly, so they're not slashing prices at the expense of creating another issue. We had so much fun talking with Jeremiah and could have talked to him for hours. During our conversation, Jeremiah opens up and shares his personal story and his health journey to heal himself, which ultimately led him on his path to pursuing a career in the natural food space. We talk about Thrive Market's role with the future of our food system and regenerative regenerative agriculture and how they work with farmers. Thrive Market makes it easy for their members to do the right thing when it comes to shopping and nourishing their body. If you're not already a member of Thrive Market, you will be shortly after this episode. Because Thrive Market is making wholesome, nutritious food available to people everywhere at affordable prices. When you shop at Thrive Market, you are also voting with your dollar, which is something that we can all feel good about. So with that, let's dive right into today's fun and inspiring conversation with Jeremiah McClue. This episode is brought to you by our wonderful sponsor, Appetite for Change. Appetite for Change is a nonprofit in North Minneapolis that uses food as a tool for health, wealth, and social change. This year, in light of COVID and the unrest in Minneapolis, Appetite for Change has continued to ground themselves in their mission and center their work around community connection and nourishing food. They launched a pilot program called Community Cooks Meal Boxes, which provides fresh produce and pantry items plus two recipes for over 300 families at no cost to the family. The program has been such a success that it has been extended for another six weeks and will continue into 2021. AFC has utilized the kitchens of their two restaurants, Breaking Bread Cafe and Station 81, to produce over 200,000 meals that have been distributed across the Twin Cities to healthcare workers, seniors, and families in need. In addition, they have seven farm plots across North Minneapolis that are tended to by community members and Appetite for Change youth learning how to grow a variety of plants. These fresh fruits and vegetables are distributed throughout the North Side. Even in 2021, Appetite for Change is committed to building a more equitable food system by delivering fresh and nourishing food to healthcare workers, seniors, and families in need, tending urban gardens and more. We have been collaborating with Appetite for Change over this past year, and we have loved their dedication to their mission, and we so look forward to volunteering with their organization and working with them more in 2021. To learn more about Appetite for Change, listen to episode 31 of our podcast with one of their founders, Michelle Horowitz. For more information or to donate, head on over to appetiteforchangemn.org backslash impact, or on Instagram and Facebook at Appetite for Change. Jeremiah, welcome. We are so unbelievably honored and excited to have you on our show today. You know, Thrive Market is a brand that Marty and I are both passionate about from your values and your mission and the history of giving back to communities in need, as well as the high quality products at affordable prices. And I know Thrive Market's been around for over five years. And I was actually, when I was doing my research, I was looking back to in your app to see when I first became a member and started shopping with Thrive. And it was actually back in September of 2015. So I think that was right around the time that you were founded. And I know I first learned about Thrive on another wellness podcast that I listened to. And I know that many of our followers are going to fall in love with shopping with Thrive after listening to this conversation today. Wonderful. Thanks so much. So great to be here. So to start out today's conversation, you know, everyone has a story and we'd love to hear about your journey into the natural food space and focus on the environment and ultimately how you ended up at Thrive Market. Yeah, well, that's a fun one. It's um, always, always fun to tell your story, I guess. But like so many people who ended up in natural products and wellness, I had my own kind of personal health journey along the way. And so I was raised in Southern New Jersey and was on the standard American diet. And, you know, my family, I'm, I'm not from a commune of hippies in Ojai. I'm uh, not like, I have no deep roots in natural products. I was just a regular kid, um, single mom who worked really hard. And um, we were basically in survival mode, right? Like we didn't have a lot of money. Uh, my mom, I was a latchkey kid. I was in that generation where Um, was coming home after school from the time I was a small child, letting myself in and making the Kraft mac and cheese and, and uh, eating the McDonald's. And, you know, my mom would pick me up and 
that would be the dinner on the way home. And um, so subsequently, I ended up with just a lot of digestive issues. And mm. um, really, I had been to a lot of Western practitioners. And at the time, I'm a little older. So this was in the in the 80s. And um, there wasn't a lot of knowledge, there wasn't a lot of awareness on digestive issues and things like IBS and Crohn's and all that were very underrepresented. And there really wasn't a lot of information available. So I had been to tons of doctors and really got no concrete diagnosis, got a lot of, you know, maybe you're lactose intolerant, maybe there's this wrong, maybe there's that wrong, but nothing actionable. And no one, literally no one talked about diet and lifestyle and, you know, what you're eating being a factor and, you know, let alone things like probiotics or fiber, all these things that we know we have so much information about now. So I um, used to call it being chained to the washroom. I had to know where a bathroom was at all times. And this was kind of like my whole childhood was like planning, even when I would go out, go out to play with kids, or I I grew up skateboarding and surfing, as you can see, I would have to know where bathrooms were at all times. And kind of that was my whole childhood all the way through my teenage years and um, ended up leaving New Jersey and going to college up in Boston. And I was really fortunate because I was helping to pay my own way through through college. Again, we didn't have a lot of money in my family. I was the first person in my co- in my family to go to college, and moved up to Boston to kind of change the scenery and you know be on my own, so to speak. And needed a job, and there happened to be a help wanted sign on a little herbal apothecary in Harvard Square uh, called Harnett's Homeopathy and Body Care back then, and um, and. I just needed a job to be totally honest with you. I had no idea about natural wellness lifestyle. And um, so I I just thought, if they'll hire me, I will do this. I will sell the snake oil. I will do all the things, whatever y'all need me to do, I will do. I'm a hard worker from New Jersey. My mom is a hard worker. I got the work ethic. And so amazingly, and like, I look back with so much gratitude because I ended up working at the juice bar there and reading books. And at the time we were building the business. So it was rather quiet at times. And it gave me a lot of time to read books in between chopping carrots and peeling mangoes and doing all the things. And I just started on my own researching uh, pre, this is pre-internet by the way. So I started researching via books um, like prescriptions for nutritional healing and Linda Rector pages, healthy healing (laughs) and cross-referenced irritable bowel, Crohn's colitis, all these things. And There was a common theme, right, which was eating whole foods, avoiding processed foods, avoiding unhealthy, you know, fast food and eating more vegetables and fruits, which I'll be honest, at the time I was eating very little fruits and vegetables, probably some canned green beans and and corn, frozen corn here and there. That was the extent. And um, becoming vegetarian was a big deal for me because it was just shifting that volume of what I was consuming in terms of calories, right? Um, From bread and meat and dairy to whole foods and fruits and vegetables. And and so I started cross-referencing and I found this theme. And for me, it was too much to ignore, even as a kind of food ignorant kid from New Jersey, where I was just like, wait a minute, if all these books are saying the same thing for digestive issues, what do I have to lose? I was in a lot of pain. I was really uncomfortable all the time. My life was very limited. And so I dove in and within about six months of these radical lifestyle changes and taking a lot of probiotics and eating a lot of green foods, uh, I saw just dramatic shifts in my health and became regular and um, just felt energy from my food. I remember that moment of feeling energy from my food for the first time and was like, I think this is how people usually feel at at this time when you eat good food. Um, And so for me, I fell in love at that point. That's a long winded way of saying uh, I'd started a love affair. And for me, it was also this unlock Um, growing up a skateboarder and a surfer. I was definitely anti-establishment, a little anti-mainstream. And so for me, it filled this punk rock void too of like, wait, they're not telling me everything. There's information being suppressed, you know, and I need to get this out there and I need to help other people find this because if I didn't realize this and I was going to college, I was educated, I was working (laughs) and, and then I figured millions of other people didn't know this either. And so for me, it became this passion of I've got to get this out to a broader audience. I've got to find ways to facilitate natural living and wellness to other other Americans and other people around the world. And 
So I ended up dropping out of college uh, to do this and uh, became the manager of the juice bar, which at the time was a massive career achievement. I was very excited. Um, and then I moved from there, moved out to Boulder and to follow this path, because at the time Boulder was kind of the Mecca, you had to go to Boulder to, uh, to be in wellness and ended up um, fortunately opening the first Whole Foods store out there. And um, that started a journey with Whole Foods Market uh, that I was on for about 16 years in different capacities, uh, working at retail, working in the stores, but then uh, opening new stores, helping them grow, and then moving over to the brand management side and developing a lot of private label products for their Whole Foods and 365 brands. Um, and then coming back to the global office here in Austin, where I live now, and doing, uh, I was the executive global coordinator for health and beauty for about seven years, uh, left just because it was time and time to move on and ended up meeting Nick and Gennar, the founders of Thrive Market and, and uh, heard about this idea of how do we bridge this gap of um, access to natural and organic products that still, despite Whole Foods and all the efforts of the company that I used to work for, really broadening awareness and making natural and organic far more mainstream, there was still these huge swaths of the country where um, there was just not the access to these products. And then the other hurdle has always been economic, right? And just the barrier of entry for healthy products was with price points that were higher. And so when I met Nick and Gennar and heard this vision of, hey, what if we eliminate the cost centers? And what if we deliver to people's homes and we are able to create this new reality where we can broaden, truly broaden the access to these products beyond just going to your local store. Because a, a lot of us, I know y'all are in Minneapolis, I'm in Austin, we're fortunate, we have tons of access, we can get great healthy products all over, but there's huge parts of the country where people are shopping at a Target or shopping at a gas station, or there's just not the availability, um, especially 10 years so for me, once I realized what we were trying to do at Thrive, it was, it was a no-brainer to join the team and, and fit perfectly with my own ethos and my own passion, which, as I said, was really like, how do we get this out to more people? How do we broaden access to healthier products and give people the tools to heal themselves and, and be the healthiest they can be um, versus relying on you know, other factors or, um, or being told what to eat or or what you should do or what you shouldn't do. Um, having access is the first key. So I, I love your story. And I, it was like meant to be that you walked in that store in Harvard Square. I mean, it's truly amazing. And that you took it upon yourself to really read all of those books and learn everything. And it seems like you were so passionate about what you were learning and engaged. And you just, I love how you just took that and like, made it your career. So that's a wonderful story. And I am wondering if you will explain to our listeners what Thrive Market is, first of all, because some people may not know. Absolutely. Yeah. So we're, as I mentioned, we're building a mission to drive an online marketplace for the conscious consumer. And um, I think what's been so exciting is like, as you mentioned, my journey is nearly 30 years now, which is crazy. It used to be really hard to even get information and understand what healthy living means. Now we're bombarded all the time with access. So Thrive, simply put, is a membership model. You can think of it as like the natural product store meets Costco online. So you join, uh, you pay $60 annual membership fee, and then you're in the store, um, very similar to club stores uh, that exist in brick and mortar. And then once you're inside, there's about 5,000 products or so. Uh, across all the categories you would ever need. Uh, grocery, we also have a healthy, sustainable wine program. We have um, fully grass-fed um, beef and meat and seafood, sustainable seafood, MSC responsible seafood, pastured chicken um, that ship frozen to your door. And then all of the grocery non-perishable categories, all of the household cleaning and personal care and body care and nutritional supplements. Uh, but what we've done is we boiled it down so that it's heavily curated to only the best in class products. So we have hundreds of brands on the site, as I mentioned, thousands of products. We also have our own brand, Thrive Market brand, and some other exclusive brands that we worked to launch with partners. Um, but all of them 
are non-GMO. All of them are clean labels, so they're free of artificial colors, flavors, preservatives, and wherever possible, as simple as they humanly can be. So simple ingredients that you understand, no fillers, no synthetics as, as much as possible, and very delicious, very effective if you're looking at personal care or household cleaning, and just try to really simplify it. We know I know, I know, and we know that it can be completely overwhelming to walk into a whole food store or even go to Amazon or some of our other big competitors. You're bombarded with like thousands of products and you can't even sort through them. Like you even go to a nut butter category or something like that. And there's just hundreds of options with all different ingredients. And um, so we've tried to distill that down and make it very, very easy to just find the absolute best. And we have a whole team of category managers and, and buyers, if you will, people who all they do is this for a living. They have my same passion, um, multiple, multiple people who have their own categories that they love. And they're sitting there finding the best products for you, for our members, but also they're working with those suppliers and working with farmers and growers and producers to have conversations with them about how the food is grown, where it's come from, are people paid fairly, what are we doing together? What about the packaging? Are we making it the best it can be, the most environmentally responsible and also the safest and best way to deliver it to your house so that it's fresh and vibrant and full of nutrition? So um, that's kind of the nutshell version we've done. I could wax poetic for a really long time about all the things we've done and um, you know, being, being zero waste and carbon neutral since we've launched and our zero waste fulfillment centers. We use wind power to power our, our fulfillment centers. Um, we're B Corp certified. There's a lot of things we've really done behind the scenes, but the most important thing for people to know is like you're getting the absolute best products that are the most ethically sourced and the most responsible. Um, on the planet, as far as we know. Well, so. that was such an awesome introduction. And we want to dive into a lot of these areas. The one thing I wanted to highlight too, that I love is that for every paid membership, right? Does yes. Thrive Market gives gives a membership to someone in need, right? Which is one of the, it's like the Tom's model. And I, that's one of the first re reasons what really drove me to Thrive Market, in addition to all the things you just mentioned. Yes, that is so important. And I'm so glad you reminded me to say that, or you brought it up, you said it because we often forget that. That's our core fundamental mission is we're one for one. So every paid member that joins, we donate or give a free membership to a family in need. Uh, we also focus on teacher, military veterans and first responders. Um, you know, the cool part though, I will add to that is that's baked into everything we do. So every paid member that joins, we do that. What I love and what I've been so proud to be a part of is that we also never say no to other causes in need or, or need situations like every natural disaster that's happened, including here. We just lived through one uh, recently here in Texas this winter and Thrive Market stepped right up and sent multiple trucks of food. We partnered with Richard's Rainwater here in Dripping Springs, which is a stone's throw outside of my office here um, to deliver trucks of water to Houston and here in Austin. So um, and that is the same with the fires that happened in California or the hurricanes that have happened in other parts of the U.S. So we um, step up wherever we can. We've also raised over $1.5 million for COVID-19 relief funds um, for families in need who are, you know, either furloughed or, or uh, lost their jobs. So uh, we try to make it so that we're truly giving more access to people and we're truly stepping up to meet people where their needs are and, and saying yes, as much as we can. I, I like to tell people we're a yes company. Like if you ask us and you have a need, we're going to say yes, or we're going to find a way to help support. That's amazing. So. Yeah. And I think just the accessibility and also your prices. I, you know, I just want people to know I, I can, I can be a little bit of a price shopper, if you will. And I'm always amazed at how reasonable the it is to find good, high quality food. And I love that you have the Thrive Market label as well, um, which I buy a lot of the Thrive Market label products. So I stand behind the quality of that. So thank you. We, we put our, I mean, that's our mission, right? We need to pull prices down. We need to work, um, work to make that happen. And we do hear, you know, like everyone, we're on social media, we're paying attention. And a lot of times we hear from people saying, well, we don't, know about paying for the membership like we're afraid 
that why would I pay for a membership um, when I can just go shop? And the reality is, to your point, Stephanie, is like you will make up your membership in savings in an average of two orders. So yes. I know my family, we're heavy users. We get a Thrive order a week and we've saved nearly $20,000 in the lifetime of our membership. So Great. I know we're probably the exception because we order a lot of product from Thrive, but, um, but it adds up quickly to your point. And we do our best to control pricing and keep bringing it down. And the last thing I'll say about that, because I'm passionate about this subject too, is just that we do it in the most mindful way we can. I mean, I think whenever you hear about slashing prices or bringing it down, typically there's someone else paying that price. I mean, whether it's a farmer not being paid fairly or whether it's labor being used to bring the products to market that aren't, people aren't being paid fairly or being mistreated, um, we kind of do the opposite. It's one of the gifts of being e-commerce is that we don't have store locations. We don't have a lot of overhead in terms of price. And rather than taking that to the bank, we put that into giving lower prices, more aggressive prices on high quality, the highest quality of products that you can find. So it's it's literally part of our mission and part of what we're trying to do in the world. But I think it's really worth talking about because it's so easy. Like we see a lot of the big retailers that'll just lower the price so much. And then you hear these horror stories about how they were doing it because um, somebody else was paying that cost. And we're very passionate about not solving one problem, which is access and creating a whole bunch of other problems for people all over the world. And it's just, it's just not fair. It's not who we are. And we want to make sure we're, we're kind of above that fray and our members have the confidence and security to know like, okay, I feel good. Nothing bad is happening so I can get affordable products. And so it's a passion for us. That's wonderful. Um, and I, I mean, when I'm on Thrive Market, I can see just because I kind of know pricing too when I go into the store versus on your site and I, you can see that the prices are lower. So it's nice to hear that confirmed and that that's part of your mission. So I'm wondering about, you know, the future of our food system. Can we talk about a, that a little bit? And you know, what is Thrive Market's role in that future? Yeah, it's, again, as I've been alluding to, it's something we take a lot of ownership in and, and have a lot of pride for. Uh, we, as I noted, not just for our third-party brands that we sell on the site, the, all of your favorites, um, we have those conversations ongoing just around like supply chains and, and food security and what you're doing and what they're doing with their farms but especially on our Thrive Market brands and our, and our exclusive brands that we partnered to develop. For those, we feel an exceptional amount of responsibility because we do get to control those sources and um, we get to select and work with farmers. And um, I know on a personal level, I've been super fortunate to travel around the world to several of our different farms and growers, whether it's coffee or chocolate, olive oil, several others that I could name off and the conversations are the same every time, which are, what are you doing agriculturally? How are you growing food? What are you doing to support your community? Um, so I'm sure your audience has probably heard the term regenerative agriculture. And that's something that we're leaning heavily into, which is just this idea that, you know, you don't have to farm and grow one thing on land until, and do it over and over until the land has nothing left to give you can grow food in a responsible, conscious way that cycles in different food sources and cycles in different cover crops and uses animal agriculture and grazing to organically fertilize the land and cycle through it without machinery and without uh, pot pesticides and chemical fertilizers, um, really doing it the old fashioned way, I guess you would say. Um, and that's how all farming was up until about a hundred plus years ago. Um, and, and we did quite a, quite a great job. So technology and, and scientific advances are always going to happen. And I think the even the best regenerative farmers and organic farmers leverage technology to improve and improve outcomes. It's just picking the right ones that work with the earth, not against the earth, so that you're actually creating a richness and an abundance. And baked into that term, regenerative agriculture, is this idea of regeneration and this idea that if you treat the earth kindly, much like your body, right? You heard my story and, you know, I've been fortunate on a personal level, I'll, I'll link this together to ecosystems, right? Like 
on a personal level, I'm also the first person in my family to be in my 40s and not be on medications and not have health complications and not have chronic disease be part of my life. And um, I feel super grateful. I attribute that more to healthy eating and healthy living, um, but also coming out of and regenerating this, this body I'm fortunate enough to have. And the earth is the same way. It's amazing how it's a model, right? Like our bodies and the earth are very similar. And if we treat them with mm -hmm. kindness and respect and we honor what, what we're trying to do, um, they regenerate and the earth is so good at regenerating. Um, we've even seen some of the data from the pandemic where when there was less cars and less planes and less, and less boats in the water, um, nature started coming back. I know here, I live in the hill country outside of Austin and my wife and I were talking about how like we've never seen so many animals around our house as we have this year. And there's been way less cars and way less um, things going on outside. And we, we know that's not sustainable. Like a lot of people have had to suffer for that to happen, but, um, but it's a testament to the earth and a testament to that regeneration that happens. And um, so working with farmers in that same way, um, because there's been a lot of great science and a lot of studies talking about the future of food. And if we don't change how we harvest and grow food, we could be down to, you know, 60 harvests or less of, of food left. And um, it's troubling. And I have children and I, I want to leave a legacy for them. But more importantly, I want them to know they have a future and, and there won't be a world without food. And, um, and we can change this and we have the, the tools to do so. But the other thing I'll say you know, you got me on another topic I'm passionate about here. So sorry to continue talking. But the other thing I'll say is like, we are a market-based economy. Like we're, we're all consumers, you know? Um, and so we get to decide with our dollar where we spend it and how, what we support and what businesses we support. And so I feel really lucky and really privileged to be at a time when we have the internet and we have information at our fingertips so we can figure out where our food comes from and how it's grown. And we can consciously make those choices to support farmers that support regeneration and, and people who are mindful about the way they're treating the earth. And um, it's a gift, but it's only a gift if we, if we follow it and, and act on it, right? And um, so that's kind of our responsibility. Pretty easy, right? Like it's not a it's not a heavy lift as long as we put our dollars in the right place. Um, and so, and, you know, a lot of other people are doing the heavy lifting there so that you can have um, that impact, which is, which is a gift. I love, I'm so glad that we, you know, pivoted a bit to talk about all this, because I think it's so important, especially in the, you know, in this pandemic, or hopefully as we're coming out of it. Um, and I love the thing you said about like voting with your dollar. And I think that's something that we don't, most Americans, most people don't realize. They go to the store, they buy what they want, and they don't consider all the aspects, including the agriculture, the farmers, everyone involved. But I just think that's such an easy way for us to, everyone do their part, right? Like, yeah, this is a big issue that you're talking about, but if we all you know, kind of do one thing every day and by shopping at Thrive Market and, you know, other companies like you, we have peace of mind knowing that you're considering all those things to make it easy for us. So, yeah, I mean, that's totally the goal, right? I mean, that's our, one of our goals is like, let's make it so easy that somebody may be doing the right thing by accident, right? Like, you know, like, I mean, intention is great. And like, you know, all of us at Thrive, we're here for the mission. Like we talk about it as a company, especially as we've grown, just how many passionate people we have in the company, which is basically everyone. But like, let's make it easy for our members. Like we don't want our members to have to think about and know and have assurance. And, and to your point though, I mean, I think, you know, again, we've lived through a pandemic. We've had just these crazy political divisions in the country and all kinds of things going on. But um, at the end of the day, like you said, voting with your dollar and being mindful of where you're spending your money. And, and you don't have to be perfect. Like you're going to have your treats or you're going to have things that you love to do or things that you still love and you want to do. And, and uh, but if like you said it perfectly, Stephanie, which is if you make that one choice or you decide I'm going to, you know, only buy this from now on, or I'm going to cut out sugar. It may even just be your own personal health, like that you're focused on. And if you're shopping with us, and like you said, there's several other great options out there. 
um, that are also sourcing mindfully and being responsible, like you're going to feel healthier, your family is going to be healthier, you'll be stronger, and you're also making this ripple effect kind of positive difference, which, uh, which is so amazing. And now we will take a quick break from this episode to hear a word from our sponsor. Have you been thinking about a new home build, remodel, or even rework of a smaller space in your home? We have all spent more time in our homes over the past year, and many people are trying to recreate spaces in their homes to bring more joy and functionality to fit their lifestyles. It can be really hard to know where to turn, but Sarah and Marcy, co-founders of Chisel Architecture, are the experts that will help you gain clarity and confidence around your project. One of the unique aspects of Chisel Architecture that sets them apart from others is their trademark design approach called Pattern of Life. This approach is a game changer for homeowners and how they experience the design process. Marcy and Sarah really listen to you to fully understand your needs and advocate for you during both the design and implementation process. When you think about your home environment and how it supports you, Chisel Architecture believes your overall well-being should be in the mix. Sarah and Marcy want you to live well in your home because they are so passionate on their design approach. They have a special offer for our listeners. Book a two hour consultation and receive $50 off. Simply email them at hello at chiselarc.com. That's at H-E-L-L-O at C-H-I-S-E-L-A-R-C-H.com and mention the Art of Living Well podcast to receive your $50 off. Consultations must be booked by June 30th to take advantage of this offer. It's almost like you're an online co-op in some ways, right? 100%, I use that example all the time. Like, oh, really? You, you all are in, the, in Minneapolis, so you have the Wedge, which is one of my favorites. And yep. as you can tell, I'm a total natural products nerd. I know all the all the independents around the country yeah. because I go and shop there. but. Um, we have Wheatsville Co-op here in, in Austin, and it's very much like the 21st century food co-op. And um, and even I'll take it one step further on that, because what I've um, being an, an older person who didn't have online shopping growing up and did shop co-ops, um, I always think about how similar it is to the co-op because we are constantly looking at what our members are searching for on the site that we don't Mm -hmm. have or what they're asking for on social media or sending us emails about or telling us you know we get a lot of love notes I like to call them which are just people saying like thank you so much my son is celiac and we had no great way to get products in North Dakota and you guys saved our lives and you guys were there for us and um, so subsequently, when we see those, we don't just go, oh, great, let's pat ourselves on the back. We're like, oh, wow, like we need to help continue to broaden these options for gluten free. Like we need to lean into making more products that are gluten free in our brand and more grain free products. And how do we reduce sugar content? And like we know that there's this community of people relying on us and we want to keep providing more options, better options, cleaner options and you know, filling that that void for people. So to me, it's like the epitome of the co-op model, which is like Mm -hmm. our members tell us what they want, what they need, and then we react and respond. And, you know, whether it's bringing in a new brand that we found that we love that meets those needs or developing our own products because we can't find them anywhere. um, Mm -hmm. That's kind of the mindset we use, but it's very member driven and member centric. And um, in fact, even in our conversations internally, when we're doing something new or looking at a new brand, that's the first question we ask ourselves, right? It's like, our members, do members want this? Like, do we have any data points that show us our members are interested in these products? Mm-hmm. Um, and if so, like we'll lean in more, right? So what are some of the like trends that you're seeing in the next you know, year? Obviously we just had a pan, well, we still are in the pandemic. Um, hopefully we'll be coming out of it sometime in the next, I don't know when, I can't even guess when, but hopefully sometime soon. So what food trends do you see kind of in this next upcoming year? Yeah, it's a great question. And it moves so fast, especially in online. And um, I feel like just in the digital age in general, things move really fast. But the one, and I kind of mentioned it a second ago, so sorry if it's redundant, but the one thing that keeps coming up is the low sugar, no sugar. Yeah, Marnie and I talk a lot about sugar, so this is perfect. 
getting rid of sugar from food. And it's funny, I know during the pandemic, like we, like so many families, um, we did a lot of baking, we did a lot of home cooking and um, we had like the heavy cookie phase <laughs> and the heavy brownie phase. Yeah. And, we and I, I will tell you, like, I will testify, I did not feel great. Like I even told my wife, I'm like, I got to cut back on the sugar. Like I, um, so full disclosure, I kind of, you know, working for a company that's based in LA, LA is always ahead of the mm -hmm. food trend. You know? and so I was hearing from my Thriver colleagues out in LA for years, like sugar, sugar's terrible. You got to stop eating sugar. And I was like, ah, oh, you know, it's fine. I mean, uh, but then this year I had that direct experience where I just felt so much worse and, um, so it's, it's been fun for us on the food trend side, because we've been able to, like I was telling you earlier, partner with a lot of our suppliers and a lot of our producers to say like, Hey, that sugar content looks really high. Or why are you adding sugar to that? And good for you. Um, I'll tell you. Like, <laughs> yes. We talk a lot about sugar. So the secret of the food industry, I mean, there's so many of them, right? But yes. one of them I found is that, and like our team talks about it all the time is this mindset of this is how it's always done. So we're going to keep doing it that way. And like, you know, sugar has a lot of great purposes in food, right? Like, like there's a reason why sugar is what it is. Like we love sugar, like humans, we love sweetness and we love that, that flavor profile, but it also, you know, can act as a preservative. It can do a lot of different things in recipes. And so I think it's kind of that byproduct of, oh, well, we've always added sugar and also this idea of like kind of laziness, like we don't feel like changing. It's easier for us to just do this. And also sugars become so commoditized that it's cheap and it's affordable and it's easy to just throw in things. And so we ask those questions like, hey, how do you do it with less sugar? Why is there sugar in that? Can we take it out? We don't need the sugar, do we? You're already adding fruit or you're already adding a natural sweetener source. Why are you adding incremental sugar? So you, you probably know because you all shop the site, but also our members will observe, even when we're not able to totally remove sugar, you'll see our products or the products we sell have lower sugar content. And I would say that's a trend that's not going away. Like it'll keep being more and more so that way um, because it's just logical and you just feel better. You really do. Like once you get unaddicted and you kind of break that cycle, you'll start being like, wow, why was I eating so much sugar? Uh, wow. mm -hmm. Exactly. Your body, you know, stops craving it. Well, yeah, you really you do. Kind of get off the wagon. And what about like upcycled food? I know that was kind of a new trend Marnie and I were looking into at the start of the year. And I saw that you have the, those pulp pantry chips on there. So I wondered if you're, if you're seeing yeah. more of that. We are. Um, the interesting thing I'll say about that too, pulp chips was as soon as you brought it up, by the way, that was what came to mind for me. Um, I love, love pulp chips, but uh, but we are, we're seeing a lot more of that. We have another brand called Regrained um, that we launched recently. Uh, so, and it's this idea that, wait a minute, before we just say this is waste, what can we do with this? And especially if it's really good, high quality, organic material. And um, so I think there's a couple ideas there. One is we're constantly talking to suppliers about what what their byproducts are, right? Like that has such a negative connotation, but it really shouldn't because a lot of times, especially when you're making organic food, the byproducts are food themselves, right? And um, right. So there's this idea of like, how do you reuse those into products? The other idea is just like, how do you reuse them in a regenerative farm and how do you compost and create better soil and use them to fix nitrogen or use them to do different things or, or control pest management, um, which, you know, some of the best farms I've visited here in the U.S., but also in Central and South America have been able to take those kind of byproducts, leverage them into different formats to treat their crops. And like, you know, um, so it's this idea that like everything can be reused and repurposed, whether it's into another product or whether it's for other other purposes on a farm. Um, so pretty exciting. And again, just that I would say, like, just to talk about Thrive again, because that's why I'm here, but we do a lot of that behind the scenes, too, with our supplier networks, right? It's not just what's the outcome for us, but if we meet a farmer that's doing something really cool with a, with a quote-unquote byproduct, we'll say, like, oh, you know, we know another farmer. Would you be willing to talk to them? Because they have the same 
same byproduct or same outcome that they're struggling with. And so we do a lot of kind of connect the dots behind the scenes. And um, for us, it's like just the right thing to do. We don't get a lot of credit for it. If there's nothing to, there's no marketing there, right? Like there's nothing to talk about there. It's more just how do we keep creating more good in the world and cre- keep creating a kind of network of sustainability or responsibility. That's amazing. I love learning about even, yeah, all these um, ways that you're doing the right thing. And I, I love for Thrive to get more credit for it because I think a lot of consumers want to know that they can feel good about the products and the companies that they're supporting. Um, and speaking of that. Which kind of, yeah, leads us into the fact that you guys are now a certified B Corp, um, which is amazing and really that coveted qualification, right? So can you tell, well, first of all, congratulations, because that's super exciting. Can you tell our listeners, you know, what exactly that means? And I know we have already talked a lot about um, all the good in the world that Thrive Market is doing. And this is almost like the the stamp on that, right? Yeah. Like the proof that you're actually doing what you're saying you're doing. Yeah, it's super exciting. And I'll tell you, thanks for the congratulations. It, it I'll tell you, it's not easy. <laughs> so it took us almost two years to go through the process. Wow. And um, they do an incredible job, the folks over at B Corp, just really getting into all aspects of your business and asking all the tough questions. And we love the tough questions because like we are trying to be as mindful as we can and be responsible. So um, B Corp is just, it stands for Benefit Corporation. And it is literally, to your point, it's the stamp of approval, just showing that all of the ways that you're doing business are responsible, both environmentally and to people. And so it's, it's, the equivalent of an audit, right? Just a really detailed audit. So we um, invited the B Corp folks into our business, full transparency, gave them all access to every bit of information around our business, how our employees are paid, how we're working with suppliers, where we're sourcing from, what our standards are. Uh, I mean, literally anything you can think of, right? Um, they're, They're into and just verifying that you're doing the right thing and that you're being socially, environmentally, and business responsible. And so I think it's it's both that stamp, but it's also, again, an incredible family to be a part of because there's hundreds of B Corps and they're all different businesses, by the way. And um, across, if you go to their site and you start looking for B Corps, um, it's super exciting to see the different diverse variety of B Corps that are out there doing different things in the world. and. The cool part is, is that if you shop B Corps, you'll know kind of what you were saying earlier, like you can rest assured if you're buying from a B Corp that the homework has been done, the due diligence has been done to verify that that company is actually doing what they say they are, and probably more that you don't even know about, um, which is the really exciting part. So uh, we were thrilled to not only get the certification, but to be, be the largest online grocer ever to receive. B Corp status. So, and mostly it was something, again, you work on for so long that when it finally happens internally, you're like, oh yeah, it finally happened. (laughs) We can can exhale now. Like we've been working on this for a really long time, Uh, but it's a testament to like the process they have and, and how thorough it is and how true it is. Um, So super. Yeah. Yeah. That's very exciting. So switching gears a little bit, Jeremiah, I know Thrive Market's part of the upcoming documentary Seeding Change, which is going to air appropriately on Earth Day, which is April 22nd. Can you tell us a little bit about the film and then the the, the mission to spread the message about the importance of sustainable businesses and how we can, you know, all save the planet sort of one person at a time? voting with our dollar, like we talked about earlier. Yeah, it's an amazing film and um, we're honored to be a part of it. And um, I feel exceptionally fortunate because a lot of the people you'll see in the film are personal friends that I've known uh, for a really long time. And we've done a lot of this work together and traveled together and and been to farms and um, been to indigenous communities that some of these folks source from. But the idea is, similar to this thread we've been talking about this whole time on on this podcast like just the idea that you can make a difference with everything you do and and you do that by selecting or choosing 
mindful companies that are being your steward in the world. Like they're living up to your values and what you would like to see your dollar spent on. And so when you uh, tune into the movie, you'll hear several different stories of different examples of businesses that are doing this same work. And a lot of them are brands that we sell, by the way, and people we've collaborated with on different missions. But um, again, this idea that consumers and, and capitalism can be used for good to create positive change and create economies and market around the world in a mindful, inclusive way. And I think that's that's the crazy part is like we've been at this consumer thing since heavily since the 1950s, right, in America. And um, it kind of got off the rails for a while where people were trying to drive down prices and externalize costs. And um, you kind of got separated. We got separated from reality around like, where does this stuff come mm. from? It just magically appears on, on a grocery shelf. And um, I used to do talks about vitamin production and, and nutritional supplement production. And uh, I would travel around the country and talk to Whole Foods team members, employees around the country. And I used to always start by saying like, I'm here to tell you how vitamins are made and they don't magically roll down a hill into a bottle. Um, yeah. so, like, <laughs> there's a lot that happens and that's every product we buy, right? Like joke about it, but it's like, we get so disconnected from what we buy and consume that you don't even think you just go to a store and you have all these options and what one is the most affordable or what one's the best or what, what's my decision tree. So having B Corp or having fair trade or having organic, at least these certifications tell you there's some more thought going into what's happening. And that's what seeding change is all about is just this idea that there's not just thrive, not just several other B Corps, but there's this whole network of companies that are trying to do good. And like, we believe in conscious capitalism and we believe that consumers can make a positive change just by doing what they already love. You're not changing your behavior that radically, right? To make a smarter choice or a more mindful choice. And it doesn't have to be this painful, you know, thing that has to happen it, as long as you're being mindful and inclusive. And um, for seeding change and the folks that you'll see in that film, um, you'll see a theme there, right? It's like conversation and communication between humans to solve problems together. And like, we can do this. Like we're, wi we're hardwired to do this. Like we're hardwired right. to love each other and care about others and care about others' families. And so this doesn't have to be, you know, this dramatic, painful process when we all just come together for a greater good and, and we use our, use our minds and our compassion to create that change. Oh, I love that. So will this be on Netflix? Or? Yeah, it'll be on all the streaming platforms. Um, yeah, oh, so okay. you'll, it, it'll be widely distributed and available, um, but super, super exciting. So. Yes, well, I can't wait to watch it. I, I love watching these types of documentaries and we'll link up all this in the show notes and everything. Awesome. Well, and I, I think it's so cool also because like, you know, I think there's a whole world of people out there that really don't know anything about what you're saying right now. And so TV, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, <laughs> is a good way to get the message out to mass, a mass number of people. So I think um, I love that, you know, I love all these documentaries that have been coming out and that are, you know, all about these types of issues and people will be like oh I just saw that movie and I I didn't realize sugar was so bad for you or you know whatever it is so I think this will be pretty yeah awesome. well I think these documentaries can be so impactful for so many people and really this profound message that you're communicating in it and I know like for me I remember the first time I watched fed up documentary you know that was about sugar and I, I was like oh and I just wanted to like scream it from the rooftops, you know, and like share it with everyone I know. So I think that well, this will have a ripple effect. Totally. Yeah. Or even the, the social media one, I can't think of what it's called right now, but um, the one that's out there right now, all about social media and Facebook and yeah, yes. blanking on the name, but it's pretty impactful. Yeah, no, totally. <laughs> and I think too, I mean, again, I'm a, I'm a father, I'm a dad. Like I always say I'm a dad first and like everything else I do is just like my life. But, uh, but it's like, there's also positives, right? Like there's so much, we hear so much negative and we hear so much fear and, 
Uh, but there's so much positive happening in the world and there's so many people doing good. Mm -hmm. Like, and there's so many people who care. I, I said, I've said it several times already on this, but I'll say it again. I feel super grateful because a lot of these people are my personal friends. And like, I've, we've been doing this together for 30 years and, um, and just knowing they're all out in the world um, and thinking about them doing good right now, even like, I have friends all over Africa that are doing amazing work all over Central America and South America. Um, and it's just heartwarming because you do hear so much negativity and so much that's wrong with the world. And then you go, well, you know, at the end of the day, we're also just people trying to survive and trying to thrive and trying to have great lives. And we want that for others too. And it doesn't all mm -hmm. have to be bad. Like it doesn't all have to be negative and it isn't like there's so much good happening. So um yeah. spreading those vibes right so and i think we need more of those so right now so yeah. i love that um so as we start to wrap up the conversation we love leaving our listeners with some practical tips strategies that they can implement immediately into their lives and just wondering maybe and you've already shared quite a few um but what tips for someone who's maybe just starting to get motivated or maybe they're not even there yet as far as sustainability um and encouraging everyone to do their part to this very you know, complex and larger kind of global issue. What can people do? What can they start doing? It's just real simple. Yeah, I mean, it, it, this can go a number of ways, right? I mean, I, yeah. I, mean, I think like this may be even too simple, but I would just say like, and I'm sitting here looking at my bottle here and I'm just like, drink water, right? Like, I mean, it's just mm -hmm. starting there. Like um, I used to work, as we alluded to, I used to work in natural product stores. Like that was how I spent basically the first like, 10 years of my career. And I used to work in the supplement aisle in the wellness department. And I used to have customers come in all the time with a myriad of, of situations and illnesses and everything. And they would tell me like, what's wrong? And here's what's wrong. And, and I would immediately stop and just say, are you drinking enough water? Um, like, do you drink coffee or caffeine every day? If so, how much and until what time? And, you know, if you're, mm -hmm. if you're doing it afternoon, like you're probably going to have a lot of other health issues and you're probably not going to be able to sleep well. And so really at the end of the day, simply put, it's like drinking water, eating healthy food, exercising and getting sleep. And like, I know that's like, really, you hear that over and over and over everywhere you go, <laughs> but it's so fundamentally yeah. simple. And so to not, make it overwhelming, you know, just pick something and say like, Hey, I'm going to stop drinking caffeine or sugar drinks or coffee at noon. And I'm going to replace that with water every time. And just give that a, give that a time period for yourself where you're like, I'm going to do that for a week. Mm -hmm. and I'm going to see how I feel. Um, the other thing about that is just like logging the, re logging the results, right? Writing them down saying like, how did I feel on day one? Like, I really wanted my soda. Like, I really wanted my coffee. I was losing my mind. Like the second day I had a headache, the third day I, you know, like each day writing it down and realizing that that's a normal process, but then like seeing what the result at the end is and like writing down the positives and the negatives and, um, and then just having, seeing what that impact is for your own self. I think like the personal impacts are the greatest, like the things you feel the most. So, um, but beyond that, like, I mean, obviously we've been talking about it this whole call. It's just really looking at where, where the products you're buying are coming from and like what decisions are you making and what's something for you? Like we all do it. We all buy dozens, if not hundreds of products, right? Like what's one that you're like, I really don't care if I change that one. Like, I'm going to try an organic pasta versus, you know, the one I buy from the local supermarket every time, or I'm going to try, I'm going to make one switch just to see what that'll do. And um, all those little switches add up and you'll start seeing results. And you'll also, like we've been talking about, you'll know that you're making a bigger impact, even if it seems silly, or even if you tell your friend or your partner or whatever, and they're like, whatever, why are you doing that? Like, <laughs> It doesn't matter, right? Like, you know, you're making a little difference and um, and then suddenly it ripples from there and you're like, wow, that was easy. I can do something else. Like, it doesn't have to be Absolutely. painful. It doesn't have to be hard, so. No, I couldn't, yeah, couldn't agree more. And Stephanie and I work, yeah, we're both health and wellness coaches. So we work with clients on all of those things 
often. And I think journaling what's going on with your body on a daily basis is super helpful. Yeah. It just grounds you so, in reality too. Like, you know, cause I, we're all guilty, right? We're all guilty of like what fact is uh-huh. versus what I'm feeling. <laughs> and, and sometimes they're, right. sometimes they line up and sometimes they don't. And you can be way more dramatic in your own mind, but when you write it down and you reference it, you're like, Oh yeah, actually it really wasn't that bad. Or, you know, here's the difference it made in my life. And um, so it's, It can be very profound over a period of time. You both know too, I always tell people when they convert to eating healthier or they start drinking more water or they cut back on caffeine, like we were talking about earlier in this call, regeneration doesn't happen overnight, right? Like you have to give Mm -hmm. your body some time to detox. You have to give your body some time to rebuild and use the tools you're giving it. So to go from oh, I'm doing all these things today. I'm going to stop. And tomorrow I'll be hundred percent different. Like that's just not how the body works. So, <laughs> um, so giving yourself time and being kind to yourself and letting it happen and unfold for you. So. That's so per- so eloquently said. Yeah. Beautifully said. So we need to start to wrap up the conversation here, but you know, we'll link up in the show notes how people can find Thrive Market. And I know you guys are offering and 25% off first purchase with Thrive Market and a free gift if they join, which is amazing. So thank you so much for that offer. And um, one thing that we like to ask all of our guests is what does the art of living well mean to you? It's a wonderful question. And I think for me, it just means being mindful and Um, really thinking about my choices every day. And that can be consumer-based, but it can also just be how I treat my family, my children, those around me, and trying to make a positive difference, being good. So um, being mindful for me usually leads to being good, being more empathetic, being more compassionate, and ultimately being a better citizen, a better person, a better family member. Um, So like everyone, I'm not perfect. I I snap at my kids or I, you know, I lose my patience, but if I come back to that center of how can I be mindful, how can I be patient? Like what, what does that other person really want from this? You know, or what do they need? Um, It always grounds me back in like, okay, like, let's just, let's just do the right thing and be good and kind. And, and uh, for me, I'm a big believer in like this idea that the more good you create, the more will come back to you. And, um, I've experienced that and I try to instill that in my children in relationships. So for me, that's kind of the art of living well is just being mindful and keeping it simple. So. Oh, I, that was beautiful and very inspiring. Um, and you're clearly doing that, you know, every, in everything that you do, but it's nice to hear that, you know, we're not all perfect. So <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> no, no. And we can hear yes. your passion. So and you, you have like this combination of passion and yes. I, you know what, again, I'm so fortunate to have been in this journey of right where I wanted to be. Um, and I think like that's, that's the greatest gift I think anyone can have in life. And again, it's come with hard work. It's come with trials and tribulations, like all lives, but being on the path that you want to be on and like making a difference and feeling positive about it. Um, it makes you exude that passion and it, you're, you're present in the moment where you are. And, and so thank you for noticing that. And thank you for doing yeah. what you're doing and spreading the word and sharing with your audience and your clients. And um, thanks for keeping it all going and helping people be healthier. So Yeah. Well, thank you. We've loved having you on today. This was an awesome conversation. We could have talked for hours. I feel like here and kept going, yeah. kept going. Yeah. So. <laughs> Have a wonderful day, Jeremiah. Wonderful. You both too. Thanks so much. Thank you so much for listening to the Art of Living Well podcast. We are so grateful that you joined us today. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with a friend or anyone else you think may benefit from this information. We'd love for you to subscribe to our podcast, leave us a review, and tag the Art of Living Well podcast on social media. If you want more inspiration in between episodes, you can find us on social media at the art of living underscore well on Instagram and Facebook, where we will share snippets from our daily lives and our journey to living well.